Previously on The Bill. I'm going to see her with your help or without it. And the messier it is, the more the press will lap it up. You start tonight. Tonight? Well, that's going to mean a 24-hour straight shift. You're not seeing him, Abigail. You can't stop me. Show some respect. Look, we've better things to do. 149, go ahead. I need the van. I've got two suspects for taking and driving away. Yeah, all right, Gary, we're on our way. We are not worthy. Go home, now. Go on, beat it, he told you. Sorry. Well, you weren't secure last night. I put the bites to prove it. If you want foot or an eyelid and snigger in debt, you picked the wrong woman. Last night was the one off. Excuse me. His brother was standing around laughing. He said two other people crashed the car and ran off, but he had the keys in his hand and the engine was still red hot. I left him case. Hey, I had a really good time. You can both carve another notch on the bedpost. What are you talking about? That's what you do, isn't it? I don't know. Is he? I mean, you might have been me before, but I haven't. Look, I don't want this to come out wrong. But you know when you're really looking forward to something and, and you get it, and it's a letdown? Well, it isn't with you. Cassidy seems to be filling up at a rate of knots. What's happened? It's Friday night, ma'am. Oh, I know what night it is. Well, the two angels in some of the bigger clubs are in a price war. You know, cheap beer. It's bringing all the young lads out. Oh, well, Barton Street's already shut. So maybe you can use the East Greenwich for overspill, all right? Well, don't just stand there. Get out there if you're so busy. Come on, chop, chop. Ma'am. Is there something wrong with this? No, ma'am. Good. OK. Oh, hey. I'll go down there and see if I can cut them off. You're from outside the two angels. Come over, Miss Shirt. Come here! Come here. Are you OK? Take it, you lost them. Yeah. How many did you say there were? About four of them. All bang into and they turned on me. How'd you get on? Oh. <laughs> Ran out of luck down there. Yeah, they scarped her through the gate. Sarge! Sarge! It's that kid from outside the club. He looks pretty messed up. Is he breathing? Barely. Get an ambulance, quick. If this was a continuation of an earlier fight, why wasn't it dealt with then? Not a fight, ma'am. It was more like rowdy behaviour. Rowdy? That's a bit of an understatement. It may be in hindsight. Forget hindsight. Have you searched the scene yet? Reg and Gabriel are doing it. What about the suspect? Claims he's a victim too. Could be nonsense, could be true. Well, keep you away from this one. We don't want any cross-contamination of evidence, what right? Your mates, yes, They're not my mates. They was drinking the two angels. I don't know. How come you're all having a go at the lad that got turned over then? Because he was legless. He was funny. Everyone in there was laughing. It's not as if we were doing it together. That's not what it looked like to me. Are you having a laugh? I got popped by the same ones as him. And how did the other ones get away? They just did, ma'am. 
Then maybe you should get back in the van and go and look for them. All right? Yes, Mum. Is she having a go at you? <sighs> Did Reg and Gabriel find anything? Uh, they found a the tube ticket and a brick that they must have eaten with. It's not your fault, you know. Don't look after me, Des. I don't need it. I wanted to say something to you back at the station. Des, give it up. I don't need this. Look, you've got me all wrong. I wasn't trying to be killed. What I wanted to say, and I'm not very good with the words, is that when I unwrapped it, it was... It was brilliant. And if something's that good, well, it's got to be mutual, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. You weren't so bad yourself. So why are you seeing it like a one-night stand? I don't know. Well, don't. Because something like that, well, it's best repeated, not forgotten. Look, Reg is coming back now. Shush. I want to take it on with me. But... Stop it, Des. It's a sin. It's adultery. You can't say that. Stop it. Please. I can't stop it. Not now I know what I'm missing. Down the operating theatre. She's got a brain hemorrhage. Look, it's not your fault. That's the second time you've said that. Well, that's because it isn't. Which makes it sound like it is. Thanks. Do you, um, want me to wait? Or are you making your own way? I'm not coming, Des. I'm not in the mood. It's been a hard night. All the more reason. I'm going home to my family. Another time. Right. Des, about last night. Like I said, I can wait. I mean the GPH. I'm going to get some more details off the lad with the bloody nose. I want you to chase up the tube ticket. See if one of the others dropped it. It's date and timestamp, so you should be able to get something off the CCTV. What about CID? I've told them we're keeping it. Why? I feel responsible. Is that because the wicked witches had a go at you? No, I just do. Well, I'll tell you what, I was there and I don't feel responsible, so you shouldn't. Well, I've told CID we're keeping it, so we are. Are you OK? I'm fine. You know this... Are you feeling responsible? Are you sure it's about the assault? I'm fine. So please, Des, just... see if the tube ticket gets us anywhere. Hey, that's definitely him. Yeah, I moved him on last night. I saw the two angels. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, you better write it up then, haven't you? Yeah, well, Hello. Why is Gabriel standing sentry over there and you two have scrolled away in here? What's going on, ladies? Uh, well, uh, Mum, we're IDing faces that were involved in the GBH last night. Who for? That should be the CID by now. Who's it assigned to? Why are you doing CID's work? Do you mean the GBH? I do. It's just that uniform are involved from the start. I thought it'd be more effective. Tying up three officers is not effective. Three? Des and Reg and Gabriel. I only tasked Des. I just wanted to see it through, ma'am. I can see that, but why? I, I just did. Is that bothering you? No. Why? Well, you're not as sharp as usual. Everything right at home? Yeah. Right. Then do what you should have done in the first place and send it up to CID, all right? Was she having a pop with you again? Ah, oh, Des. How did I get to this ripe old age without you looking out for me, eh? It's a total mystery to me. Paul Avlock. Yeah? We need to check the description of one of the lads that attacked you last night. Not again. To be honest, mate, I'm not bothered. Well, we are. About the other lad. What am I supposed to do about it? Can I come in? Thank you. Right. 
We've got a description of one of the lads you were with. I told you before, I wasn't with anyone. He was white, five foot ten, had a denim jacket, grey sweatshirt and dark hair. Ring any bells? Nah. Possibly lives or works near Barking. Nah. Is that it? Yeah. That's it. For now. Right. If you uh, see any of those lads again, you will let us know. They're not my mates. I didn't say they were. I just said, if you see them again. Any joy? He knows we haven't got anything. Someone was peeking out the window while you were inside. Where? Up there. Right. Where you going? Out of sight, out of mind. Come on. Too bad when you're on your own, are you? Desmond. Mum. The dividing line between outright disobedience and commendable initiative depends on one thing. In charge as we speak. Very pleased to hear it. Mum. Sheila. Mum. Why didn't you tell me you were still working the GBH? Because you'd have told me to stop. That's right, and there's something else too. What's that? I don't want my private life and the job being mixed up, and I don't want you doing things for me just because it's me. So what do you want? I don't feel comfortable with this, Des. Not with us or what happened or how I feel. So? So when it spills into my work or home, I can't handle it. Well, look, no spills. Steady as a rock. I do need a bit of fun in my life, though. Right. I know just a fella. Would you like to get out of the car, please, sir? Get out of the car! What we got here, then? All right, what's in the bag? I said what's in the bag. Don't you speak English? What is? GPS units. The ones we've been looking for. And now all we need are the cars to go with them. Clever stuff, the way. They put them in the back of a taxi and then have us on a wild goose chase all day. And meanwhile, they're winging their way out of the country. Got to admire them, though, haven't you? I wouldn't say that in front of the governor. <laughs> you know the one you were driving? You know when you were driving? Oh, I don't know why you're bothered. He doesn't know nothing about the police or the warehouse or anything. I'll take them in. You keep the sergeant to speed. Um, the taxi driver had the GPS units in the back of his cab, but we're going to need an interpreter. For him, are you? Oh, nice one. How do you fancy a uh, quick debriefing? You see, Taverner, we've already got our hands full today. You don't look that busy to me. I'm only talking about 20 minutes. You obviously need something to do. Work, maybe. What about the end of the shift? Des, I'm busy tonight. George! Duty calls. Warehouse. Get them to the FME. Come on, lads. They've just been locked together in the Sands of Van for three hours. Imagine that. Surely you can spare us an hour later. Sorry, I can't. Well, what's so important? You don't want to know. Oh, yes, I do. I promised me boys I'd make them their favourite supper. All right, so 
We'd rather sweat over a hot stove than with your favourite PC, eh? It's not gonna happen tonight, Des. Oh, yes, it is. Even if it's only a mead. So, thanks for pulling together. This is what we've got so far. A few days ago, the Union Building Society was hit. The armed robbers got away, but were then ambushed by another gang. At the time, our only lead was a guy called Sid Wright, an associate of one of the security guards of the Building Society. We soon discovered that Sid worked in security at the police warehouse and was married into a notorious crime family, the Fosters. DC Drummond went undercover at the police warehouse and we all know what happened next. The police warehouse was hit for a load of expensive cars. There was another ambush, only this time four people are dead. And just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, Ken Drummond's son, Alex, has disappeared, possibly kidnapped. Our priority today is to find that boy. And this Sid Wright is Vince Foster's brother-in-law. Mum, isn't that the man that we found in that car accident? Yes, sir. I heard the brakes have been tampered with. Yeah, well, Sid Wright definitely knew about the plan to rob the police warehouse, and it's highly likely that he also knew about the Building Society robbery. So whose side is he on? Well, probably the Fosters, as he's married to Archie Foster's daughter. It'd be pretty stupid if he wanted to double-cross that family. So what's he doing wrapped around a lamp poster? Well, it's possible that our unknown gang has forced Sid Wright to give details of the police warehouse plan. Sid Wright has somehow disappeared from St Hugh's. PC Harmon, could you handle calling the hospital security to view their CCTV footage? You can count on me, ma'am. This is Rufus Etienne, who we suspect of supplying the getaway motorbikes at the Building Society. We're hoping he'll be able to give us some names. I thought he was still inside for the armed robbery job at the bookies on Church Street. Unfortunately, no. Got full remission for good behaviour. And DS Hunter is bringing him in now. And this Sid Wright is Vince Foster's brother-in-law. Mum, isn't that the man that we found in that car accident? Yes, sir. I heard the brakes have been tampered with. Yeah, well, Sid Wright definitely knew about the plan to rob the police warehouse, and it's highly likely that he also knew about the Building Society robbery. So whose side is he on? Well, probably the Fosters, as he's married to Archie Foster's daughter. It'd be pretty stupid if he wanted to double-cross that family. So what's he doing wrapped around a lamp poster? Well, it's possible that our unknown gang has forced Sid Wright to give details of the police warehouse plan. Sid Wright has somehow disappeared from St Hugh's. PC Harmon, could you handle calling the hospital security to view their CCTV footage? You can count on me, ma'am. This is Rufus Etienne, who we suspect of supplying the getaway motorbikes at the Building Society. We're hoping he'll be able to give us some names. I thought he was still inside for the armed robbery job at the bookies on Church Street. Unfortunately, no. Got full remission for good behaviour. And DS Hunter is bringing him in now. Vince Foster has already murdered two accomplices and is suspected of taking Ken's son Alex hostage. What does Vince want with Alex? Well, he's obviously banking on Ken being able to help him find the man who murdered his father. Our worst case scenario is that we have to comply with Vince's demands to get Ken's boy back. I want these guys caught as fast as possible. That's our mission for the day. And Sergeant Murphy, I want you to make the relief available to MIT and the kidnap squad to assist in their investigations. Yes, ma'am. We've got a lot of work to do, so let's move it. Ken? I didn't think the hospital could keep you in. I just need to know what's going on, sir. No. And what's Ken doing back here? I couldn't stop him, ma'am. Oh. Ma'am, there's something I need to tell you. Ken's foster's been in contact with Ken. He's got Alex. Vince wants him to find Sid Wright. Oh, come on. Do so you know to speak to him? Yes, yeah, Sarge. Ken must be exhausted. Yeah. I'll be feeling. Sarge, it kicked off about an hour ago. Wherever they were, made a real racket out here. They've thrown stones through the windows. They've really frightened Barbara and the other girls. Anyone get a decent look at them? No, they had their hoods up. They'd scarf it anyway by the time I got here. Ask about the houses, right? See if anyone's seen anything. Sarge. How come you got here so quick? Well, Barbara called me. Barbara. They were all friends.
So, Barbara, any ideas who's behind this? Donna, finish your fag and start clearing up some of this broken glass. Well, it wasn't an unsatisfied customer, I can tell you that. Tell your mate to put his eyes back in and come through. Look on your face. Anyone would think he'd never seen a half-naked woman before. Well, at least I don't pay for it. How come Reggie's so well known around here? It's always the quiet ones. Mm. Did you want a brew? Look, Barbara, we can only turn a blind eye so often. I mean, this is a bit more serious than playing your music too loudly. I do special rates for members of the constabulary. I'm, I'm happy with what I've got, thanks. There's a firm pretting up a couple of old houses further down. You want to talk to the woman that owns that? Reckons I'm bringing down the neighbourhood. You seriously think a property developer would go this far to get you out? She made me an offer on this place. I refused. Then she started shouting the odds. Set up a petition with that local councillor to get us out of here. Lynn McCoy, her name is. Other than that, I haven't got an enemy in the world. I don't count the vicar. Oh, there you are, love. Come on, sit down and have a nice cup of tea. I always feel so safe when Reg is here. Danielle McClendon. The other one is Stacey Lawson. Danielle went missing after Stacey was attacked. We'd like to speak to Stacey. We think she can help CID with her investigation. They hardly look old enough. Well, they're not, are they? Danielle's 16. I think Stacey's former pimp, John Rutherford, is holding one or both of them. Well, I've heard the name. You'll be lucky to find him. You get to know the street lowlifes who prey on these kids. Well, don't worry. If I hear anything, I'll let you know. Well, Reg, anyway. Do you want a biscuit, love? Yeah, all right. This is shaking you off, isn't it? No one likes to be attacked in their own home. You've used Barbara Hart as an informant before, and you seem to have built up quite a strong relationship. Would you be happy using her again? Well, it might be a bit awkward, though, Mum. Why? You seem very amicable. Uh, well, no, no, it would be, be, be fine. So, no problem? So. Well? Well, what? Are you going to tell us what discounted rates you got off the lovely barber? We don't. Look, she... She doesn't, all right? We're just friends. That's not the only way you can get him, you know. Look, if you need any advice about the fair sex, you only have to ask. Look, leave it out, Des. Why are you censoring my private life, anyway? None of your business. Touch the nerve, have I? So, come on, what were you and Sergeant Murphy talking about? Firstly, it's none of your business, PC Tavener. And secondly, we leave nattering to all women like you. I was just interested in the case, wanting to know what the plan of action was. If it had any impact on you, I'd have asked you to join us. What was said in there was between PC Hollis and myself. What's the big secret? You better get going. <clears throat> well, haven't you got some important gossiping to be getting on with? Hello. Hello, oh, Bob. Well, where are you? Ah, no, I'm on the other side, lad. Hang on a minute. I've got a funny feeling here. Ah, oh, I've got you now. Stacey could be in a lot of danger. We think it was Rutherford who beat her up yesterday. Now, God knows what he's going to do to her if he finds out she's been talking to us. Why do you think I know where Stacey is? God, look, she's on the game. You must have heard the other girls talking. Now, see as you are trying to locate Danielle, we need to locate Stacey. If you know anything about where she is, Bob, please tell me. Look, you won't get into any trouble. I'll make sure of it. I won't have more coppers sneaking around my place because of this, will I? OK. Hi, hi, Betty, baby. Still on duty, you know. Shut your days. Sorry, love. Like I said, I really can't help you. Look, you were just about to tell me. Then for a cup of soon, Reggie. But ignore this idiot. Idiot. I'm not the one who's chasing after the tired out prostitutes. You moron. Now, because we're mates, I'm going to give you a chance to take that last comment back. Look, there's, I'm just going to find out where Stacey is. Now, if Rutherford gets to her before I do, it's all going to be down to you and your big mouth. Hey, come on, we're still on duty, you know. Love. Hey. Lucky day, eh? Two call-outs to the beautiful Barbara already. Mind you, some people say you shouldn't mix business with pleasure. So what is it with you and her? 
Me and he used to went past and tell me that she's your girlfriend. Look, you do door to door, yeah? See if anyone saw her anything. I don't want you upsetting her again. More like you don't want me cramping your style, you little jiggle In here, this way. <laughs> Darling, it's all right. Hang on a minute. You're Stacey Lawson, aren't you? <laughs> Do you know my colleagues have been very worried about you since your friend went missing? Not now, Reg. Not now. Leave here with me. I'll find you somewhere where you can hide out safely. I told her I'd take care of her. John Rutherford's been spitting blood since Stacey spoke to the police. If she refuses to work for him again, he'll kill her. By staying here, she's endangering you and the other girls. Never mind what she said. She's 17 years of age. I'm just looking out for her. I warned P.C. Young this had happened. If she hadn't steamed round there and wound Rutherford up, I'd be fine. And now he's out to get me. Look, officers are investigating Danielle's disappearance right now. These men are dangerous. You've seen what they can do. Meaning you can't promise to protect girls like this from men like Rutherford. I'm sorry, Reg, but I know where the priorities are. And they're not with the likes of us. Look, I do the best that I can, all right? We'll patrol the area. If these men come back, we will catch them. Stacy, please. You're too young to get caught up in all this. Stacy, it stays with me. <sighs> what are you proposing? Well, Barbara needs protection. It's going to get worse. It's not going to stop. We've already had two calls to her place today. I was hoping we could put 24-hour protection on the house. I'll speak to Gina, but with Alex missing, our resources are stretched. Does Stacey have any idea where Danielle McClendon might be? I don't think so. But then she wouldn't talk to me. She feels that we've let her down. Oh, don't be looking at me. It's not my fault. If you hadn't followed me and interrupted my meeting with Barbara, I might know where Stacey was and got her on site. Thank you, PC Hollis. So. Hello, Mum. Any news on Ken's boy? No, not yet. But see, idea closing the net on who they suspect of killing Vince Foster's father. All helps get Alex Drummond back. Well, well, let's hope so. You followed, Reg. I gave you strict orders to keep your nose out. What were you thinking? Well, if you hadn't been so secretive with a conversation and that, I mean... Sorry, Sarge. I think punishment might be coming your way. Probably gentle with me, Sarge. Very nice of Des to help you out the other night. I'm sorry, Mum. Well, I was looking all over the station for him. I had no idea he was with you all along. Oh, well, uh, what are friends for, eh? Hmm. Guess you owe him one, eh? Yeah, I guess I do, yeah. I wanted to get you on your own. I knew it. So that I could tell you this has to stop. You followed Reg, ruined his chances of getting vital information, all because you didn't think my orders were ones that you needed to obey. Do you know what? I love when you're angry. You're dead sexy. This is serious. Come on, I'll admit it. You're struggling to keep your hands off me. Will you stop? I'm trying to tell you off here. Are you? I'll get over to Barbara's. Yes, Sarge. For helping me the other night with those reports. You know the overtime that you didn't do? Look, it's not that I mind covering for you, but be nice to be warned. I had to think on my feet, didn't I? It's a bit, um, delicate. A woman. Reggie, babe, I'm gonna need you to be there for me now, mate. You're not messing around with a married woman, are you, you idiot? It's just a bit of fun. Do you hear that? Reg! Where's Stacey Lawson? They got her. They kicked the back door through. They must have taken her out through the garden. It was carried out by John Rutherford. He has clear motive. And we know he's a violent man. Now, we have to get to Rutherford before any more harm comes to Stacey. Any more news on his whereabouts at all? No, Sarge. Well, I think I could get a bit more out of Barbara. I think she'd be prepared to speak to me now that the stakes have been raised. OK, off you go then. Sarge. Sarge. Oh. Look, um, I'm sorry you had to come in like this, but I think it's better than another police vehicle turning up on your door, sir. Yeah, I've got enough problems to deal with at the moment without more curtain and twitching neighbours making complaints. Yeah. What's happened? Any news on Stacey? No, I'm afraid not. Look, Barbara, well, that's why I'm going to have to ask you for your help, you know. Now, 
I know that you said you didn't know John Ramsey, but, well, you gave me the impression earlier on that you might know a little bit more than you're prepared to let on. I'm sorry, Reg. I honestly can't help. All I know of her from the girls. No first-hand knowledge, I promise. What about the dress? Nothing. Just he's got a bad reputation. He sets the girls up in flats and gets them hooked on drugs. Next thing they know, they're sleeping with his mates. Rutherford's violent, and he's not an enemy I'm keen to make. What about your girls? They might know a little bit more. Yeah? Well, I bet you anything they won't talk. Not after what's happened to Stacy. I'll ask them for you, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Thanks. If you do hear anything about Rutherford that you think would help me to track him down, you let me know, won't you? You're looking well, Reg. Seeing anyone at the moment? No, I seem to be getting all right by myself. Trying to board him from the river a couple of hours ago. A young girl. Fix the description of our miss per Danielle McLinden. What a waste. You need to find Stacy. Uh uh. Can shut the door. Was there something else, ma'am? Actually, I wanted a quiet word. More a word of warning, perhaps. What you do in your private life is none of my business. But romantic liaisons with members of the relief. Is my concern. I don't know what you mean, Mum. Oh, I think you do. I'm not judging you. I just want you to tread very carefully and think about what you're doing. I recently lost one very good sergeant who got his work life mixed up with his private life, and I do not want to lose you because of some silly love affair turning sour. And it will, Sheila. Because it always does. Mum. Where's Ken? I can't find him. Well, hold on, Gary. I know this is the right place. Ken! Gary! Gary! Urgent assistance required. Warehouse on Shadwell Lane. Shots fired. It's a uh, one on one. I repeat, shots fired. One four, that's one. one. Gary, come in, please. Where are the shots coming from? Ken Drummond's around here somewhere, trying to rescue his son from Vince Foster. Who else? Well, Sid's right as far as I know, and Gary's gone in there. Ken! Received. 149 from Sierra Oscar 1. Gary, come in, please! Ken! Ken! Sierra Oscar from 149 at the warehouse in Shadwell Lane! I don't have any license plates! Where's Ken? I don't know! I don't know! From Sierra Oscar. Can you give us make and model? Ken! Ken, are you all right? Over here! Over here! Is he okay? Ken, did you see what happened to Sid? Alex, where's Alex? Come on, Mum. Mum. Okay, so this woman's married. And I know you don't approve that. But as long as no one knows, no one gets hurt, right? And I'm sorry to land you in it. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, come on, Reggie, babe. It's not exactly anger offence, is it? Well, no, but I was thinking about Barbara. Look, Stacey Lawson was abducted by her pimp right from underneath Barbara's nose. No wonder she's upset. Oh, there you go. Sierra Oscar, Sierra One, disturbance, Riverside Street, uh, TOA 1040. Uh, over. It's OK. It's forgotten. Forget about it. Get them out! Get them out! So you want them to get them out now, do you? Huh? Well, if I was you, I'd keep that button. We're dealing with this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, listen, we have got fornicators arriving day and night, yes? Young harlots brazenly displayed... There! Look! 
Holes out! 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 Not after what happened to Stacey, getting snatched from here in broad daylight. I can hardly blame them. Just as well, too. We've only had one punter in the last two hours, thanks to this lot. There's not really anything we can do about it. Oh, come on. I mean, if I was outside a church harassing their congregation. Well, it's hardly the same, is it? Oh, no. Reg, there must be something you can do. John Rutherford must be killing himself with laughter. He's one of the most violent pimps in Sunhill and he's delivered the protesters' wishes, practically driven us out. Barbara, this isn't easy to say. It's Danielle Stacey's friend. She's been found dead. Murdered? Well, the only thing that's clear at the moment is that it's a drugs overdose. So Stacey's in real danger, then. They come from good homes. They're soft targets. Naive, trusting, desperate to be in love, have a real boyfriend. And that, that stupid lady counsellor. And... Look, since we found Danielle's body, it's even more urgent that we locate Stacey. Now, she's already been beaten up once. We think Rutherford was involved. So do you think he's taken her? Well, we can't rule that out. But Rutherford's an hard man to find. Now, do you think a pimp like him would hurt Danielle? 13 year old girl. Danielle would have been too valuable. Watch, so you think Stacey's back working for him, yeah? Probably he's not much choice. It's got to be worth trying. Okay, we'll go check it out. Let's just hope we're not too late, though, eh? And we can't be. Stacey is the only one who's offered to stand up and give evidence against her pimp. She needs you to protect her. They only took Stacey because she was young and could pass for even younger. Right, we'll see what we can do, then, eh? Thanks. Okay, yeah, sure. Superintendent? Yes. Barbara Hart? Yes, I know. Could you spare me five minutes? I'm sorry, now's not a very good time. No, it's not a very good time for me either. Or the girl that was snatched from my place. Or that child who's just been found dead. Right, that's enough, eh? Hey, that, Edgy babe. Have you seen Ken this morning? Yeah, he looked terrible. First Evers and now is. Put you off having kids for life, don't Yeah, hey, what is this? Doggy porn? No, no, no. That is Boris. He belongs to the man who lives at number 11, Riverside Street, not far from Barbara. The lady who took these photographs, she said her house vandalised. Now, all she was trying to do was get the owners of these dogs to pick them back up. I was thinking, Des, if we're down there keeping an eye on Barbara, maybe we could check this lot out. Great. Believe me, I do understand, but the press don't. And if the public pressure continues, I will have to take you to court for running a brothel. And John Rutherford can expect the same, can he? Certainly can. But I run a clean establishment. The girls are well looked after. For what it's worth, I once knew somebody who had to close. She laid low for a while and then made a killing by selling her house to a property developer. What, and retire? No, thanks. I think this person opened up a new premises, only a few streets away. When all the fuss had died down, very discreet. Very select. The dog at number 11 did this. Mm. So who wrote this? The same person that sent them pictures? Oh, yeah, certainly was. Look what's happened now. <sighs> Do you know, you wouldn't believe the things people have been shoving through her letterbox. Go on, surprise me. I mean, people don't care, do they? They let their dogs out, they don't check on them. I mean, somebody needs to do something, you know, for the good of the street, the good of the whole community. Look, Reggie, babe, I know you're trying to help Barbara out and that, but there's any need to have a go at me and dog owners and whoever else? There's no one in, we'll have to come back. Can't wait. Right. I've just witnessed your dog fell in the footpath. No, it didn't. Yes, it did, and I want you to pick it up. My taxes pay your wages. And here you are, wasting my time, while around the corner there's a brothel, illegally carrying on business to the detriment of the entire community. So you're happy for me to do my job as long as it suits you? Well, I'm afraid that isn't possible. And since your dog has illegally found the footpath, I think you should clean it up. Well, I haven't got anything to pick it up with. <clears throat> And the other one? I'll have to come back for that one. Good. Because I've noticed that the paint on your banner matches that that was maliciously daubed on the door of number 15. Yes, well, she provoked me, didn't she, with her stupid little chalk circles trying to get me into trouble? I expect that she was just trying to clear out the filth in the moment. 
Sarge. Des, have you seen Reg? Front desk, we're looking for him. You smell. Des. Gorgeous. Look, I've told you the inspector's on to us. No, she isn't. It's only a wild guess, that's all. If she catches us, it won't just be the end of us. It'll be the end of a lot no. more than that. OK, OK. So from now on, unless we're ultra careful. Those are my two middle names. Des, ultra careful, Tavern. Get back to work, you. Sarge. Reg. Sorry. You heard we got the all clear on Ken and this boy. Yeah, they're both okay. I was wondering if I could talk to you in company. Of course. Um, who was about Des? Des. Yeah. Um. Look, you see, I've been teamed up with him for a while now, and I'd like to think that if anyone knows him, the thing is, I'm worried about him. Go on. Well. He's in a relationship with someone, you see, and it's not a very healthy one. I see. And, uh, what makes you think that? She's married. Right. I mean, Des doesn't think anyone knows, but... Uh, Why but, are you uh, telling me this? Well, I'm after your advice more than anything else. You see, discretion, I mean, it's not one of Des's strong points. Isn't it? Well, you know, it can be... Look, I'll see what I can do. Sounds. And um, if I find out who this woman is, you will be the first to know. <laughs> 